I've talked a lot about Indiana Jones on this channel before, but surprisingly, I haven't seen too many people talking about Indiana Jones icebergs. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the definitive Indiana Jones iceberg created by Redditor Abandoned X Earth. However, I am going to make some little changes to this iceberg and I'm also going to convert it into the traditional iceberg format. And for those of you who don't know what an iceberg is, it's basically a chart that is used to better display layers of information. Entries that are very well known or on the surface level will be put near the top of the iceberg, but the lower we get down the iceberg, the more obscure these entries will get. So without further ado, let's explore the Indiana Jones Iceberg. Fortune and glory, kid. Fortune and glory. The Indiana Jones Movies Of course, when talking about this franchise, the most well-known thing about it is the movies themselves, Raiders of the Lost Ark, Temple of Doom, Last Crusade, Crystal Skull, and Dial of Destiny. Video Games Like every great franchise, Indy has himself a fun collection of video games. Some of these games are very fondly remembered by fans, including Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, Infernal Machine, Emperor's Tomb, Staff of Kings, and even LEGO Indiana Jones. Star Wars Easter Eggs Of course, with George Lucas being the creator of both Indiana Jones and Star Wars, it makes total sense for there to be several references to his favorite franchise. The nightclub in the opening of Temple of Doom is actually called Club Obi-Wan, you can see a hieroglyphic of C-3PO and R2-D2 during the scene where they find the Ark of the Covenant. And Jock's plane is also called OBCPO, a reference to Obi-Wan and C-3PO. The Wilhelm Scream <coughs> Easily one of the most iconic sound effects of all time, the Wilhelm Scream was used in the 1951 film Distant Drums, where a character named Sergeant Wilhelm is attacked by an alligator. George Lucas loved this scream so much that he used it in the original Star Wars trilogy, and it eventually found its way into Indiana Jones. The Young Indiana Jones Chronicles Airing in the 90s and created by George Lucas, The Adventures of Young Indiana Jones was a TV show about the adventures of a young Indy in the early 20th century. In the show, we get to see some of Indy's early treasure hunts, and we also get to see his adventures in World War I. I've actually got a full retrospective and a review of this show, but be sure to go check it out after watching the rest of this iceberg. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Books Indy has his fair share of books. Some of these were released after Last Crusade in the 90s, and some of these were made during the release of Crystal Skull in the 2000s. Comic Books like books and video games, Indy has himself a fair collection of comic books. Some of these were released by Dark Horse Comics and some of them were released by Marvel. I've actually read a few of these and they're pretty decent. Indy's real name. Indy's real name is Dr. Henry Walton Jones Jr. or Dr. Henry Walton Indiana Jones Jr. Meet me at Omar's. Be ready for me. I'm going after that truck. Oh. I don't know. I'm making this up as I go. Temple of the Forbidden Eye. Located at Disneyland, California, Temple of the Forbidden Eye is an Indiana Jones-themed ride that is fondly remembered by fans and parkgoers. The ride has been around since the 90s and was even recently refurbished for Dial of Destiny. Epic Stunt Spectacular Located at Hollywood Studios in Orlando, Florida, Indiana Jones Stunt Show Spectacular is a stunt show that is pretty spectacular. In the show, they reenact scenes from Raiders of the Lost Ark with some pretty impressive stunts. If you ever find yourself in Hollywood Studios, I would definitely recommend checking this one out. Abner Ravenwood 
Abner Ravenwood was Marion's father and was also Indy's mentor. Indy was Abner's best student, but after unseen conflicts involving Indy and Marion's relationship, Indy and Abner never spoke again. Abner was obsessed with the Ark of the Covenant and was even the person who found the headpiece to the Staff of Ra. Despite Abner being a very prominent character in Indy's life, he's never made any on-screen appearances aside from concept art and cancelled projects. Vlad Dracula In the young Indiana Jones episode, Masks of Evil, Indy fights Dracula. Yeah, that Dracula. Belloc eats a fly. Near the end of Raiders, a bug seems to fly into Belloc's mouth. According to the actor who played Belloc, Paul Freeman, the fly flew away from his mouth at the last second, but the camera didn't pick it up. But a lot of people didn't know this, so it just looks like he eats a fly in a very important scene in the movie. Indiana Smith Indiana Smith was the original name of Indiana Jones until it was changed to something much better. Old Indiana Jones In the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, an old Indiana Jones would appear at the beginning and end of episodes to tell stories of his adventures. However, George Lucas, being George Lucas, edited these bookends out of later releases. Harrison Ford Cameo In the Young Indiana Jones episode Mystery of the Blues, Harrison Ford actually makes an appearance as Old Indy. He's in the episode for maybe 10 minutes, but it's freaking awesome. Han and Carbonite Theory An age-old theory, this one states that Indy's adventures are merely dreams created by Han Solo while he was frozen in Carbonite. I will say that to some extent, I do like this theory because it does make you think a little bit, it is creative, but there's no way that this could possibly be true. You're telling me that Han Solo, someone who has never been to Earth, suddenly has a lot of hallucinations and dreams about Earth, and is somehow historically accurate for the most part about true events? That just doesn't make any sense. I like to think that there is a connection between these two universes, but this just isn't the way to do it. You're a... a teacher? Part-time. Raiders Original Title When Raiders was originally released in 1981, it was only called Raiders of the Lost Ark. It had no Indiana Jones in the title. When Lucas and Spielberg decided to make Indiana Jones a trilogy, they decided to go back and change Raiders of the Lost Ark to Indiana Jones and the Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hangar 51 Hangar 51 is basically the Area 51 of Indiana Jones. It appears at the end of Raiders and the beginning of Crystal Skull. It houses the Ark of the Covenant, alien corpses, and who knows what else. Garth Garth, also known as Fedora, was a thief for hire who greatly inspired Indy and also gave him his trademark Fedora. For a good while, it was speculated that Garth and Abner Ravenwood were the same person, but later on in external media, it was confirmed that they are in fact two different people. I really like to think that Garth influenced the more treasure hunting side of Indy, while Abner Ravenwood had to do with the archaeology side of Indy. Indiana Indiana was an Alaskan Malamute that Indy had as a kid. He was so fond of Indiana to the point where he ended up naming himself after the dog. And here's a fun fact, Indiana was actually based off of a real dog that George Lucas had that was also an Alaskan Malamute and was also named Indiana. This same dog was also the inspiration for the name Chewbacca. James Bond Connections For those of you who don't know, Spielberg originally wanted to direct a James Bond movie, but the studio that owned the rights to Bond refused to give him permission to film anything. Lucas then presented the idea of Indiana Jones to Spielberg, and the rest is history. Despite not being able to direct a Bond film, Spielberg still included a few references to one of his favorite franchises. 
The suit that Indy wears at the beginning of Temple of Doom is awfully similar to one that is worn by Bond in the movie Goldfinger. And they even got Sean Connery to play Indy's dad. The Spear of Destiny Also known as the Lance of Longinus, the Spear of Destiny was a Roman spear that pierced the side of Jesus Christ while he was on the cross. It makes an appearance in the prologue of Dial of Destiny, however that one was actually a fake. But there was a series of comic books where Indy did go after the real Spear of Destiny which had magical powers. Lapel Flowers In Last Crusade, every villainous faction that tries to kill Indy wears a flower of some kind. Indy even gives Elsa a flower to signal that she's bad news. Indy is a Predator This is an entry that I really don't want to talk about, but let's just get this over with. When Indy was 27 years old, he had an affair with a 15-year-old Marion Ravenwood, and after Abner found out about it, they had a falling out. I still don't really understand as to why Lucas and Spielberg added this into the movie, but yeah, it really makes you think less of this character. I will say though, I did find Karen Allen's whole take on this thing to be a little interesting. She defended Indy by saying that we never found out what the circumstances of that relationship actually was and it might have been one-sided, it might not have been much, or the whole situation might have been much different than we all envisioned it to be. I mean, they got married in Crystal Skull, so I guess it turned out okay, but I, I don't know, I don't want to talk about this anymore. Indy's Mother Anna Jones was Indy's mother and was the peacekeeper between him and his dad. She passed away when Indy was only 12 years old, succumbing to scarlet fever. She decided to hide her illness from Indy and his dad because she didn't want to worry them or distract Indy's father from his studies. Super Bowl 29 In 1995, we got Super Bowl 29, an Indiana Jones themed halftime show that was kind of fun but at the same time, just a little cheesy. The halftime show was supposed to promote Temple of the Forbidden Eye, but it doesn't even have much to do with Indiana Jones. They just had some singers pop up on stage, build some temple-like set pieces, and they called it a day. I mean, if I was a kid in the 90s watching this, I would have absolutely loved it, but it looks simultaneously expensive while also looking really, really cheap. But I guess they pulled it off because only Disney could make an entire Super Bowl halftime show promoting a single ride. The Soderbergh Cut Created by Steven Soderbergh, the Soderbergh Cut is a special cut of Raiders of the Lost Ark that removes all of the color, sound, and music from the film. This was done as an experiment by Soderbergh to better understand the cinematography and visual storytelling that Steven Spielberg implemented into Raiders. Raiders The Adaptation Raiders The Adaptation was a fan film made in the 80s by a couple of friends, and it was a shot-for-shot -shot recreation of Raiders of the Lost Ark. This might not seem like much, but at the time, this was kind of revolutionary. Nowadays, we get a lot of big projects among fans like fan films or reanimations, but at the time, this had never been done before. 